Welcome to Natak Radio. My name is Vikas Surka and today we have something special for you. A story written by 21 year old Abha Agarwal. Abha is a blogger that goes by the name Abhalicious and according to her blog Abhalicious was created with a vision to make the unheard heard and the unseen seen. Well, this 21 year old young woman is also a very powerful writer. and today we're going to present one of her stories that talks about a topic that is mostly unheard and unseen in written literature a subject a trauma that affects one in every four women miscarriage a word of caution before you hear the story the story does not hold back any punches the story goes into some graphic details of the process and what the family but most importantly what the woman goes through narrated by abha agarwal herself so here is presenting abha agarwal's dead tara lay on the bathroom floor screaming in pain withering in the pool of her blood crying her skin sweating covered with blood her body trembling her uterus like it's tearing itself apart she screams again when she feels another part of fetus trying to make itself out of her body no she found herself screaming in the middle of the night with her husband trying to sleep in the bedroom while the entire house trembled with her screams waking everyone up Her brother-in-law Hitesh came rushing into the room looked at his brother at absolute horror and then at the slightly ajar bathroom door He now wondered how could a man claiming to love a woman so hard and so desperately wanting to marry her leave her with ring pain just to get better sleep Can't you hear her scream Hitesh found himself asking his younger one Dev I can they replied unsurprisingly calm with her screams playing in the background you can then why are you not doing anything about it hitesh demanded absolutely furious and ashamed at what his brother is doing dev opening his eyes sprung from his bed standing on his foot <laughs> This happens every other month. This is the fifth time she's had a miscarriage. The pathetic one can't even hold a child, he screamed. Listening to Dave talk like that about a woman, the one he claimed to love. Unaware of what he was doing, he slapped him hard. Everyone in that house must have felt the vibrations of that slap that night, but none of them intervened. You don't get to talk like that, Hitesh warned. Dev caught his cheek with absolute horror at his brother. He realized he's never slapped him before. Never. He found a tear rolling down his cheek, eyes blood red with anger and grief. I'm done talking to you. I'm calling mom. Hitesh said raising his hands in surrender rushing out of the room You don't get to defend women when you go around abusing them they yelled I never give them physical pain they like it Hitesh spat back <laughs> Is that what you tell yourself at night they have scoffed Hitesh strides up to him catching hold of Dev's collar It's the truth he screams. Dave effortlessly tucking his t-shirt off his brother's clutches says, "Sure." and falls on the bed heavily going back to sleep. Hitesh going out, he finds his mom rushing her way towards the room. He looked at his mom, the woman who raised the two boys in a family where a human experiences true horror. 
Just go check her out, he told her, and went inside his room, yawning, locking the door behind him. Nodding her head to no one in particular, with a tensed expression on her face, putting her glasses back on, tucking her sari on her waist, she rushes inside the bathroom, ignoring the sleeping son on the bed. Pushing the door ajar, she found Tara sitting half naked on the bathroom floor in the pool of her blood. But it was not just blood. There also lay with her parts of something among it. The name of which she couldn't take, or rather, she didn't want to. She was shocked at what she was seeing. This has never happened before. In all of her years of womanly experience, this has something she has never seen before. What is that? Pointed a shaky finger at the fetus. It's dead! Tara cried. Screaming again, reaching out to the dead fetus that was now laying on the floor. Brenda, the mother-in-law, rushed towards her, keeping her hands away from the fetus, the dead fetus. It's okay, shh, it's okay, she said, trying to calm herself and Tara down, lulling her, taking deep breaths. But, no buts. Now get up. We'll have to get you cleaned up. You need rest, okay? She demanded, wiping the sweat from Tara's face, pulling her hair back. Tara looked at Brindabai, as she was infamously known in the area. She was telling her to get up, dust herself and move on. Just like the previous four times. The fact that this time was different, no one wanted to talk about. Not wanting to talk about her pain to anyone anymore, she tried getting up painfully with trembling legs. Once she was cleaned up and got all she needed, Brinda Bai helped her to the empty side of the bed, gave her the right medicine and left the room glaring back at her younger son with bloodshot eyes. With the hope that after all these years of useless banter, he would understand her. Dave looked back at his mom, saw the black plastic cover she was holding in her hands, tightly clutched. He knew what that held, he also knew what she would do with it. He knew where its fate lay. Dave took a deep breath, shook his head, shrugged his shoulders, folded his arms, huffed and went back to sleep. Some things never really change.